what we're going to do in this lesson is log into a database. Then we need to start a new project. The name of this project is going to be called Grid Component Training. The next step is to start with the very first component. There's a lot of different components in Agility. We're going to be exploring the grid component, which is probably going to you'll learn you will learn to be the most popular component you'll use um, because data fits so well into grids. And the grid has probably the most dimensions to it in terms of complexity. But we're going to start with something quite simple. We're going to call this grid um, OE Order Sales Grid. For simplicity, I'm just going to copy the name onto its description. Ultimately, this grid is our, our master control. We're going to expand on it over the lessons, but we'd probably want to put this on the menu. So we'd want to pick an icon. You really only need to pick icons if you're going to put things on menus. Uh, we provide a list of standard icons that are com compatible with all the icons that we've selected in our initial layout. That makes it very easy to do make a, just an easy professional selection and keep things looking consistent. You can do your own lookup and bring in your own icons if you want. Now in this screen is the setting screen and the only real setting here I want to talk about is this use filter panel. When I talked about the different types of grids in another lesson, I talked about the six filter panel that you could have at the top. You would use that if your data was so extensive that it was too much to fill up a grid. In this case we're going to be looking at all orders and it's uh, my assumption that all the orders in the system would not be too large to fit and fill into uh, a grid in memory. If you think you need to filter against the database that's when you'd use this filter or we are going to be adding manual filters later so that you can filter down the data. The next big step in the grid control is to, is to create some data or to bring in some data. Uh, to do that, we're going to look at the OE order header, OE word header, and you can type that name and it will position you on that table. Now you'll see there's the OE ORD header underscore SQL table, then there's also an OE order a header underscore WV. The WV are views that are provided with the installation of Agility. We have views for most of the operational tables in Macola. The advantage of the WV is that are they're normalized to uh, both progression and Macola ES. So if I were a developer and I wanted to um, build a uh, a project that I was going to use both for um, say uh, progression customers and Macola ES customers and I used these then you could provide those to both customers and the projects would be compatible. If I was a progression user thinking I was going to move to Macola ES I would use these tables. If I was already in Macola ES then I might just decide to use the SQL tables. The other uh, table we're going to look at is the ARCUS file. Now I'm in Macola ES as a database and I have an ARCUS file underscore WV that's normalized again both for progression and Macola ES. So I'm going to link these on the customer number and I would like to pick up um, a couple of uh, fields that I think might be important to managing or the order process. Like, does this customer allow back orders? Do they allow partial ships? On the main order header, I don't want the order type, the number, status, enter date, order date, 
um, PO number, customer number, bill to name, order and address, oops, ship to name, probably ship via code, because most of these decisions are going to be based on shipment information. Therefore, I probably want to know shipping instructions. Um, I'm going to want to know. Let's just continue to look down here. Um, I'm going to want to know uh, total sales amount, discount amount, tax amount, cost, freight amount, miscellaneous amount. Another field that I'm going to be looking at is are these customers on or orders on hold? And because everybody has a special user defined field that they use for processing, uh, or a lot of people do, I actually have some data loaded on the user defined field for my orders. So we're going to expose that field and use it in a unique way. And the next thing I need to do is I need to filter down on some of this data. Because if I, now one of the things I can do at this time is look at the data. This is what I've selected so far. But I've all, I have all kinds of order types, I have all kinds of statuses, and, and I want to filter that down. So I'm going to make, um, on the order type, we're just going to look at O type orders. And we're only going to look at status one. And you'll see that our SQL statement has been modified with where clause. And our data has been restricted now to status one and O type orders. So we've made a decision on data and we used um, the drag and drop design environment to do that. So the next thing I want to do is, I could be, and we're going to do this in later lessons, I could add filters. I could add buttons for drill down, alerts, and links. Um, link grids at the bottom. We're going to do all those in future lessons, but this time we're going to start off with the simplest of grids. Now, we could put this on the menu, and then we could look at this in the Agility Explorer, but the Design Studio lets you do everything you need to do to manage the, and design the grid from here. Now the first thing is we have these data column rows and the names of these are using the standard McCullough column names. But it would be nice to, um, to make those more readable. So we have uh, the ability to do, these mat, to do mass formats. And you notice that it cleaned up the names, made them easier to read. Another thing I like to do is I like to word wrap my headers. That allows you to use your real estate more effectively because you know, where I have a longer header but the data is simply a column, I can, I can make those columns shorter, which you'll see I, I really need to conserve that space to keep everything on the screen. I can also do column choosing. Now, we have a status in here, but we already decided that type and status is 0 and 1, so that's somewhat redundant. And the format, the formatting has taken some columns off of here that I want. So, I, you know, I definitely want to know what orders are on hold. Probably move some of these other pieces of information down here at the end of the grid. And I definitely want to know the total sales amount with the freight amount. And the miscellaneous amount. So this is some information we have here. Let's um, to do a little more with the grid. We're going to put a footer on it. And the reason you have a footer is for subtotals. Now the first thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of formatting. 
And to do that, I'm going to expose my grid format control. I'm going to format that as dollars. Probably these would be dollar formatted as well. And then I want to do a sum so I can see the total dollars for the sale amount. And that's got to say a standard nice looking grid. To save that I would have to click the save icon here otherwise I'd lose all that. But now when I go back in and preview it, it's exactly the way I left it. Now what can I do with this grid? A uh, couple things. First off, I can filter on information. If I just want to look at all customer 901 sales, uh, I can see those sales and then I could say, well, that's fine. I can either sort that or I can say, but I only want to look at what's not on hold. Or I want to know what I'm losing for orders from this customer because he's on hold. I can also come down here and completely clear the filter. This is the clear down here. Some other things I could do is I could add a group panel. And I could bring all the customers up <clears throat> into a group. And then I can sum on a sale amount. And now I can see the total amount of orders for every customer by sum total. Then I can come back and say on the hold flag, now I want to see what I can ship to everybody that's not on hold. And I want to see now what I can ship where I'm going to lose the shipments because they are in hold. And again, I can clear all those and I can pull the customer then back out of the group and put the um, grid back in the same state. <clears throat> all these filters here at the top um, are contains filters. So if I were to start to type outdoor, I'm going to get I'm going to get that because it's contained in there. If I type a C though, that's going to include cycle scene as well as bicycle shop. So anything with cycle in it is going to include those two customers. That's why it's a contains. If I want to just look at one of these customers, again I can do the drop down and just look at that customer or clear the filter. So it gives you an idea of how you can go about using these filters, the date filters in this series.